good evening welcome to the session it's all about the introduction to coastal and marine sector so basically this webinar is designed uh, to uh, to make an awareness for the budding civil engineers and uh, especially it will be very helpful for uh, uh, those who are in final year and third year students and people who are doing their masters in structural engineering and uh, professional engineers working in on onshore and they want to shift their domain to offshore structures for marine structures uh, they can utilize this webinar and uh, it would be great help for them so let me quickly introduce uh, what are the content we are going to cover in this webinar so initially i, I will just uh, i'll just tell you that what are the what is basically coastal and marine structures and what are the applications of uh, marine structures and in India, uh, what, what number of ports we have and what are the challenges because being a civil engineer, uh, the terms and terminology will be like uh, very new for us uh, when we enter into a new domain like a coastal structure. So what are the basic challenges where a civil engineer will face during this uh, designing of marine and coastal structures and uh, the the opportunities available for the marine structural engineer, especially uh, when you see this marine engineering uh, domain is very, uh, very small domain, and but the requirement of the civil engineer is very high. So, so if you see uh, the, so the the requirement of a civil engineer is very high. So the opportunities available for the marine structural engineer is very high. So we need to. So I'll just introduce about the what are the major opportunities available for a uh, marine structural engineer. So the major uh, major part of this webinar is understanding a jetty structure. What is the jetty structure and how the jetty structure look like? We'll compare the basic jetty structural system with the normal uh, onshore structure and what are the major loads acting in the jetty structure. And uh, we need to, we'll introduce a few things about the analysis and design of the city structure as well. So in this entire uh, marine structural concept, there are a few new loads. Those are birthing and mooring loads because probably as a civil engineering student, uh, you will be knowing the dead loads and live loads and construction live loads. But this two, three terminology will be very new, birthing and mooring loads. I'll just introduce how we'll estimate the birthing load, how we'll estimate the mooring load how it will act into the structure and i'll introduce a little bit about the seismic analysis as well because seismic will be common for both offshore and marine structures but in marine structures the lateral load produced to, due to the seismic activity is very high and that will put in put the structure into very big danger so in that case i'll just introduce about the seismic analysis as well so this entire marine structure mostly if you see 95 98 percentage of the structure will be come under the pile foundation because the normal onshore shallow footing will not work for such a huge loads so i'll be uh, introducing about the pile foundation how we are going to taking care of uh, pile and pile design in our uh, analysis so then the member stresses and pile factor of safety because when we are designing something always we should be designed for the safer side and it should be uh, within the allowable limits as per the recommendation from the from the is code so like that the member stresses should be within the limit and then i'll introduce few things about the estimation of the pile factor of safety, factor of safety because uh, whatever the pile we are designing it should be safe for the whatever the expected loads so finally, I will go through some documentation, drawing and site support, what's really happening in the industry and what people are doing and uh, uh, how we will document the design and how we will prepare the drawing and if any issue in the site, how we will address to all those things. I will give a brief introduction about this. So during this entire course, con course schedule, please pay attention because I'm going to introduce many new terminology which will be used in the ports and marine structures. As a civil engineering student, it will be quite difficult to understand the term. I'll I'll slowly introduce by one term each and everything in detail. So to start with what is marine and coastal structures? Basically the structures built near the shore or few kilometers away from the shore are said to be the coastal structures. So if you see depending upon the purpose of the coastal structure uh, that Type of the coastal structure may vary. It can be uh, used for production of the sea. I mean, the production from the sea, or it can be used to transfer the cargo from land to sea, or sea to land. Or so, depending upon the type of the, I mean, the purpose of the coastal structure we are going to build, the structural system of the any coastal structure will be determined. So, 
it can be either a piled structure or it can be either a retaining structure retaining structure is nothing but a, a retaining wall kind of structure or it can be a template structure because in some cases we will be uh, constructing isolated structure which is known as the island jetty so basically the when we are uh, handling hydrocarbons it is uh, due to the safety reason one what normally people will do it will be kept away few kilometers from the shore so in that case in those structure are said to be the isolated jetty so for those kind of structure we will be using template kind of structure so the purpose of the uh, the structure determines the structural system of any marine structure so that's a that's a major idea behind this uh, so this is the uh, typical example of any jetty structure if you see uh, the this particular structure is a domestic jetty structure and uh, uh, it is used to berth the any uh, the smaller craft can be berthed in these kind of structure but when i say berthing berthing is not, nothing but the parking happening in the ports so in ports terminology we have to use the berthing berthing is nothing but the ship parking we will not use use the term parking in this ports so berthing is nothing but the parking of the ships near the uh, shore or of the any jetty structure so types of the coastal structure let me just introduce the term alone you just get introduced the term alone uh, for each and every structure i'll explain with the picture and the purpose so i'll just introduce two three uh, um, terminology used for the jetty structure first of all breakwaters then jetty structure in the jetty structure we have berthing structure and dolphin structure key walls approach trestle so each and every structure have its own purpose because this particular breakwater is used to prevent the shore from the waves this jetty structure used for cargo loading unloading and then key wall a similar purpose like jetty structure but it will be like a solid wall approach trestle is basically kind of a bridge that is connected uh, from the shore to the vessel landing location so breakwater breakwater basically constructed near the shoreline to 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 avoid the effect of the waves waves from the shore side because if you see in this particular figure uh so in this particular figure if you see uh the effect of the waves will be absorbed by these kind of structure constructed near by the shore so if a wave energy is having 100 percentage so 90 percentage of the energy will be absorbed by these kind of the uh, pebbles we'll call that a pebbles and uh, tetrapods this this it can be either a floating or fixed so these kind of structure used to protect the man made activities near the shore so breakwater is basically so here if you see uh, the breakwater got got eroded due to the effect of the waves so similarly if we did not provide this kind of structure throughout the coastal line our entire structure near the shore line will get affected desperately and and it will it will be like it will face a huge problem for uh, the people who are living near the shore line so in that case a breakwater is constructed near the shore line to prevent the to prevent the man made man made activities near the shore so this is known as the breakwater or it can be either known as the sea wall sometimes because it is it will act as a wall and uh, it will attract the energy from the wave and it will absorb all the energy and the energy transmitted to the structure will be around 5% to 10% so this is the purpose of this kind of structure so the uh, the major major idea and then the major challenge of this webinar is uh, jetty structure jetty structure is one of the important structure that uh, most of the most of the ports and ports and harbor are constructed using this philosophy so this jetty structure is basically it can be constructed either near the shoreline or it can be a few kilometer away from the shoreline so basically this jetty structure can be a berthing structure or it can be the dolphin structure i'll i'll introduce you each and everything so this is the initially i showed one picture this structure is known as the berthing structure so this kind of a jetty structure is known as a berthing structure like uh, it it can be a few kilometer uh, far from the shore like it, it can be either a few kilometer far or it can be near the shoreline as well but the length of the jetty structure will be ranging from 50 to 400 meters in length so throughout the shoreline uh, it can be 
if you see here this is also a jetty structure but uh, it is few kilometer away from the land maybe approximately from 50 to 100 meters we'll keep away from the land so in order to handle some safety related equipment such as uh, methane hydrocarbons and all those things can be handled uh, it cannot it cannot be allowed near the shore so it has to be it has to be carried away from few kilometer from the shore so so this structure is known as the jetty structure and uh, the, the structure which is uh, isolated here is known as the dolphin structure because uh, jetty structure is similar to the dolphin structure but the length of the jetty structure will be very high but the dolphin structure will it's kind of a square structure say 30 by 30 20 by 20 meter uh, structure with the pile structure i'll introduce uh, about this jetty and dolphin uh, in details in subsequent slides first just get uh, introduced to this term alone so next is key wall and approach stressing key wall is similar concept to the jetty structure a key wall can be used for either a retaining purpose or it can be used for uh, both uh, uh, berthing of the ships or it can be used for retaining as well but here jetty structure will be having a piled structure this is a wall kind of structure so uh, that is the basic difference between the key wall and jetty structure other than that uh, both are similar Approach vessel is nothing but from the cargo from the vessel has to be transferred to the shore using a medium or a bridge. So this bridge is said to be the approach vessel. This approach vessel can be either in concrete pile or it can be in steel pile. So it will be connected with the braces. So what are the major applications of the marine structure? See marine structure or uh, the major application of the marine structure is just to, to transfer the cargo from one location to the uh, to other location. It can be either liquid cargo or it can be a solid cargo. And uh, so that is the primary application of the marine structures. So other than that, we have a protection from the shoreline and uh, it can be act as a shelter for man-made activities and for tourism development as well. So it has a lot of application, but the major application for the marine structures is basically to transfer the cargo from one location to other location. So if you see in India, we have 12 major ports starting from uh, Cochin port and here VOC port, Chennai port, like that we have 12 major ports in India and 205 non-major ports in India. So it will be keep on developing each and every year our government will develop like uh, the, the number of uh, non-major ports will be developed into their major ports and they'll be uh, uh, increasing the size and capacity of the each and every port each and every year they'll try to increase the capacity so that they can uh, they can offload and unload a lot of uh, containers and cargo from one place to other place so if you see total solid solid cargo is around 46 percent and liquid petroleum is about 33 percent and remaining will be like uh, you know the medical item medicine or any other pp item like whatever it may be the remaining will be the 20 percent around 40 percent 46 percent the solid cargo is uh, transferred from one location to other location if you see in the solid cargo in that uh, coal will be the major major uh, major share having 22 percentage so each and every year this number may go here and there if you see this is the uh, breakup for 2016 and this is the breakup for 2018 but for every year this number will be here and there but almost 80 percentage of the share is due to the petroleum and other materials and remaining will be the 20 percent so these are the breakups and each and every year uh, uh, since uh, globalization is going big each and every year we'll try to develop each and every port so that we have to we have a rehabilitation works new port design and the expansion of the jetty and uh, increasing of uh, capacity of the jetty like that the plenty of projects signed throughout the india and throughout the world but the civil engineer demand in this field is very high so that's the major major idea behind it so as a civil engineer we have a problem with a uh, few things and uh, I would not say problem it's a challenges for some civil engineers when entering into a new domain we have we will face the few problems like estimation of the mooring and berthing loads we know uh, the live loads the dead loads as per the is course but the dealing with the mooring and berthing loads will be a new challenge and then wave hydrodynamics since this this particular structure is exposed to the wave environment we have to little bit freshen up uh, uh, wave aerodynamics. It's just an extension version of the fluid mechanics what you have studied in BTEC curriculum. 
So we need to get some idea about the wave aerodynamics. And then tidal variation as well. We have a low tide, high tide, and we need to understand the ocean environment first to apply as a load. We need to understand the complete ocean environment and complete behavior of the ocean. And few knowledge about the port planning and port terminology. The, the terminology used in the port industry will be a different for any civil engineer. So that, that part we need to get to understand. And, and understanding the pile foundation behavior because of, uh, almost 60-70% uh, percentage of the foundation for uh, onshore structure will be the shallow foundation. For a civil engineer dealing with the pile foundation, a big challenge. So these are the major challenges will uh, like a civil engineer will will go through during this entire uh, entire course basically so the opportunities for civil engineer are plenty in uh, throughout the india and overseas a lot of mnc and epci companies are available for uh, like uh, they, there is a lot of demand for this kind of marine structural engineer because only few institutes of iit and nit providing the specialized course for marine structures so the demand for civil engineers are very high since the risk in the design is very high so the demand though uh, so the rewards for the engineers will be more as well because if you take any onshore engineer the package will be 30 to 40 percentage higher for a marine structural engineer because the design of marine structures involve a lot of risk and the opportunity are plenty so the major part of this webinar is to understand the jetty structure it will be a bit difficult to understand this plan i'll, I'll go to this three-dimensional view so this is nothing but the image which i shown here if you see this is the image filled with the water if you take out the water your structure will look like this so basically these are known as the piles the piles are connected with the transverse beams and the transverse beams connected with the longitudinal beams the longer side beams are known as the longitudinal beams and the transverse beams are known as like uh, the other side of transfer uh, longitudinal beam are known as the transverse beam so this this is the plan of this three-dimensional model if you see this is a 200 meter jetty so 200 meter normally will not prefer the continuous jetty it can be a uh, break for every 50 meters so that uh, to reduce the thermal stresses basically we'll be providing the expansion joints so this is the plan view and this is the elevation view so if you see the these are the piles and uh, these are the longitudinal beams and these are the cross beams so in this cross-sectional view, it will be very clear that this is the pile and pile over the pile, we have a small element called pile cap. Over that, we'll be having a, a transverse beam and longitudinal beam. So this is the basic structural system of any jetty structure. Similar to jetty structure, there is a dolphin structure. The It is as same as like that, but the only difference is a dolphin structure will be a small box like this. You know, it is around a, a 20 to 30 meter in this, di in, in this diagram, it is very clear. So this is the typical three-dimensional view of a dolphin structure is having a 20, uh, in this particular a dolphin structure is around 14 by 14 meter. So we cannot construct a complete stretch of a jetty structure here because it is all because it is useless. This dolphins are basically used to either berth or moor the ship. Mooring the ship is nothing but tying the ships. So this dolphin is used for mooring the ships, and these two dolphins are used for berthing the ship. So in that case, we do not require the complete stretch of uh, uh, jetty structure. In that case, we go for a isolated structure called mooring dolphin and berthing dolphins. So this is the basic introduction about a jetty and the dolphin structure. So what are the major loads acting on the jetty structure? So what are the loads which is uh, making a big difference for a onshore structure and a coastal structure? First of all, uh, dead loads and live loads are very common. It is similar to onshore structure and this jetty structure. So the major loads are berthing loads, mooring loads, wave, current and wind loads. These three loads are the major loads for any jetty structure. Anyone should know how to estimate this berthing and mooring loads and wave, current loads, wind loads, etc. And sometimes we have uh, operational loads such as loading arms, cranes, conveyors will be uh, 
will be the the jetty will be used for any operational purposes in that case we will be using this kind of uh, operational loads if you see when you have a jetty here uh, the the cargo from the ship has to be transferred uh, transferred via this jetty to the shore so it will be transferred by means of the pipes so the piping load will be having a major major governing factor because the pipe we need to provide a proper pipe support and that pipe support will attract the prominent load from the jetty structure so so like that we need, the piping load is will, will be one of the governing factor as well seismic loads as i said earlier the lateral load provide, um, produced by the seismic activity will be very huge and it can cause a serious trouble for uh, the marine structure so we need to be make sure to uh, our structure is safe for seismic activity as well 